There is no one uh, of the three candidates left who's going to um, stop intervening. My God, McCain wants to go to Darfur and, and, and uh, spend the lives of our young people and our own fortunes there uh, for reasons that are completely beyond me. Uh, certainly, we're not going to leave Iraq uh, because of our intervention in the Arab-Israeli war. We can't leave Iraq. Uh, if we leave Iraq, Israel's security is compromised to a degree that will be unacceptable to the Israelis, and so they will force, persuade, perhaps is a better word, us to remain there. I think Mr. Obama's uh, recent effusive praise for the Israelis is uh, pretty, a pretty clear example that uh, no matter who gets in power, Iraq is going to continue to meander along at high cost to us. <clears throat> I guess finally I would, I would say that one of the things that convinced me most to write the book was um, a matter of history. That it became pretty apparent, I think, let me step back, I think we can forgive Mr. Bush or Mr. Cheney or Mr. Clinton or, or any of our leaders, Mrs. Clinton, with not knowing an awful lot about the Islamic world or about the methods of prayer or the traditions of the prophet. But I don't think we can forgive them, or should, for not knowing anything at all about our own history. It seems to me that we have a, a generation of leaders who either are ignorant of American history or um, have l very little respect or empathy for what we've created here on this on this continent. Uh, if you pick a random date, uh, perhaps Runnymede would be a good place to start in 1215. We have been at this business for 800 years. Uh, we had 150 years of self-governing experience in North America before the Declaration of Independence. Uh, we may not be quite perfect yet. Women have been voting for less than 100 years and we didn't have a Voting Rights Act until 40 years ago. Uh, so I think you can forgive Americans for not, uh, American leaders for not knowing as much as they probably should about the world, but you can't forgive them for not knowing our own history and somehow expecting to put that 800 years of history on a CD-ROM and give it to uh, Shalabi or Maliki or Karzai and say you have here, you have six months or six years to replicate this, uh, to rep replicate this history in your country. I think that's an extraordinary, extraordinary piece of arrogance uh, or ignorance, take your pick. Um, On the specific issue of, of terrorism, I'm afraid I couldn't find a way not to repeat what I repeated in the, in the first couple of books I wrote to some extent. Uh, we're losing this war. We're losing it hands down. We have, we're not even in uh, competition, primarily because we're still stuck with a, with a political class that insists that we're being attacked because of how we live because we have democracy and uh, because we have voting and we have women in the workplace. And uh, of course that has virtually nothing to do with what this war is about. This war has to do with the impact of, of uh, what uh, at least the Islamic world regards as intervention in their world. And uh, whether we regard it that way or not, perception is reality. And uh, the perception that we are inter intervening in their world to um, uh, make things works worse for Muslims is, is the reason we're at war. If we were at war with people who were intent on dying because we had women in the workplace, we would face a lethal nuisance, not a national security threat. And so uh, 12 years after bin Laden's declaration of war, seven years after 9-11, uh, we still don't have a clue about, about uh, an enemy that's far more dangerous to us than anything we have described to the American people. Uh, that's powered by what we do, not who we are. And uh, it's certainly driven by religion. Um, the, uh, the endless 
Islam is a religion of peace chant by our leaders is, is, is surely the truth. All great religions are religions of peace unless they feel cornered. And I'm afraid many in the Muslim world feel cornered by Western intervention. Uh, we don't teach history very well. Uh, we always say the Muslim world needs a reformation. We don't always say that there was a hundred years of fierce religious wars in Europe because of the Reformation. Uh, this is something I don't, I don't know if we can, we can overcome, but we're certainly um, not doing America any favors by, by not recognizing the religious dimensions of this war. It wasn't long ago when people would take pride in fighting for their religion, but somehow that's a, ne a, negative, a negative thought in America these days. Uh, perhaps most distressing, we have politicians in both parties who can't go to the Safeway without looking at polls. And, and uh, the Middle East Institute and other, other people around town surely have now polling information in the Islamic world for the past 15 years that's very reputable, very thorough. And there's nothing in that that would suggest the motivation of our enemy is a hatred for the way we live. Um, Th those polls in most Muslim countries so show majorities and sometimes large ones that admire the way American parents can feed and educate their children, find housing, find employment, speak their mind. I don't think we would have Muslim families moving into America if they thought they were bringing their children to a vile environment. Uh, and yet uh, we continue to say that, that that's the reason they hate us, uh, because of our lifestyle. The same polls show that 80% of Muslims, according to the University of Maryland's poll in the middle of last year, share bin Laden's view that our foreign policies are an attack on Islam. 80% uh, is a pretty big number. I think any candidate in our country would be happy to have that approval rating. Uh, but we seem to not be able to, to comprehend that in our own minds. So I think that it, there's nothing but bad news out there for us. Uh, and if you listen to some of the, especially the Democrats, but the Republicans also, um, the future is uh, a new Marshall Plan in the Middle East. Terrorism is still caused by, by uh, uh, poverty and illiteracy and unemployment and the lack of hope, which of course flies in the face of all of the recent research that shows that if Al-Qaeda appeals to any group in the Muslim world, it appeals to the best and the brightest the middle and the upper middle class, the educated. Uh, it's always extraordinary to me to hear a public, polit or a public figure uh, declaim about um, how illiteracy foments terrorism when Al-Qaeda probably spends 60% of its budget on the internet uh, and internet programs, which to me suggests they may not be looking for illiterates. Um, I think that I'll, I'll, I'll stop there and ask questions. That's, or in, let you ask questions if you have any. Um, those are the basic reasons I, I tried to write the book. I thought, and do think, uh, America is in a, in, a, in a very bad problem here. It is a problem on the bright side that's largely of our own making. We are the only um, entity that can uh, resolve, decrease, um, the animosity of the enemy toward us. Uh, we create our foreign policy. We implement it. We keep it in place. It's the only indispensable ally that uh, Al-Qaeda, the Islamists generally have to the extent that American foreign policy changes in a way that we can disengage uh, from the Middle East exactly to that extent will the focus on America as the main enemy decrease.